morning. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, another gray, rainy day. Surprise, surprise. I guess that's what summer is like for us these days. Um, so uh, thank you for coming. You all have all met Sean Sheehan, our elections director, um, and Deputy Secretary Hibbert, and Elections Administrator Mark Hull. Um, so we are here to canvas the primary results um, and certify the results and the winners for each of the federal and statewide elections uh, primaries that were held last Tuesday. Um, so our mission is always to provide secure and safe elections. Um, accurate counts are of the utmost importance and I know that the time between election day and the canvas can be unnerving and unsettling for folks as they wait. Um, our priority is always accuracy over speed um, and making sure that the reports that we put in front of you are the accurate count of the votes uh, that were cast by Vermonters last week. Um, careful, deliberate, very defined in statute the way we do this work. Um, it's part of the reason why there's a whole week built in between, uh, between the primary and the canvas. Um, and as you know, uh, we had a little bit of a, a system glitch yesterday, um, and so I want to acknowledge that the report writing function um, was not allowing us to, uh, to bring all of that raw data together uh, in a way that we could create these reports for the Canvas yesterday. Um, we, have, uh, we have generated these reports. Um, this is a, definitely a separate function from the inputting of data. We feel very confident, 100% confident in the accuracy of the counts uh, that clerks entered last week. and. Um, we are also aware that this has been an issue in past elections. Um, two years ago uh, uh, was, was perhaps the, the most notable. Um, but we are in the process of creating a new uh, election management system, and we very much look forward to its rollout in 2025. Uh, our elections team has been working hard, uh, not quite round the clock, but I've gotten lots of late night and early morning emails from these folks uh, as they've been working hard to get this uh, system generating the reports that we need. So I want to give you guys a great big thank you and the rest of the team who's, uh, who's probably upstairs still working hard. <laughs> um, we talked with town and city clerks where we were having trouble generating those reports. We've verified and confirmed that the, uh, that the, the data count, the vote counts in the system have, uh, have been reported accurately. And so the reports uh, that we see before us today are really a, a result of uh, multiple verifications, both by the local town and city clerks uh, and our elections team. Um, so, uh, we are joined today with, uh, by a member of each of the political parties in order to certify these results. Um, and the vote tallies before you are the summation of the official return of votes submitted by all of our hardworking uh, town and city clerks and the statewide primary election. Uh, just to give you a little review uh, before we dive into the numbers, um, the turnout was uh, low compared to other primary elections. I think we all knew that, understood that going into it, that um, fewer contested uh, primaries meant uh, a little less excitement. Uh, we had a total of 77,373 Vermonters who voted, and this is uh, about 15% of registered voters. 29% um, of those who voted did so by absentee ballot, um, which was 22,871 uh, absentee ballots. And after our review, we'll sign off on the certification of these results and the winners, um, and that will make it official. So with that, I'm gonna pass things over to Sean Sheehan, our elections director. Great, thank you. On that front here, I'm gonna pass out two, two documents, two copies for everyone at the table, and a few extras in addition. The, the first is the summary of, of results, and the second is details on the uh, voter, voter turnout. Um, again, as the Secretary said, my, my name is Sean Sheehan. I'm the Director of Elections for the State of Vermont. And we are here to perform the official canvas of results for the federal and statewide offices voted on 
in last week's August 13th, 2024 primary election. We do so pursuant to 17 BSA 2368, which states in part, after the primary election is conducted, the canvassing committee for state and national offices and statewide public questions shall meet at 10 a.m. one week after the day of the election. As the secretary referenced, we're one day after that, and we always prioritize that accuracy um, over the timing. The composition of this committee is dictated in 17 VSA 2592A, which states in part, for all state and national offices and statewide public questions, the Secretary of State and the Chair of the State Committee of each major political party or their designee shall constitute a canvassing committee to receive and tally returns and issue certificates. Finally, 17 VSA 2371 requires that the canvassing committee shall prepare and sign certificates of nomination and mail or deliver in person to each candidate nominated a notice of his or her nomination within two days after their meeting. At the same time that they mail or deliver the certificates of nomination, the canvassing committees shall also file with the Office of the Secretary of State a list showing the vote for each candidate of each party for each office. Today we've report, prepared reports showing the final vote totals for each office for signature by this committee. These will be the official canvas reports submitted to the Secretary of State's office. Additionally, we've, preferred, we've prepared the reference certificates of nomination for signature by the committee that we will then mail to the winning candidates. The results I'll be announcing today are accumulated from 283 official returns of vote from each individual representative district across the state. Um, the results are presented in summary form in this report, which is, we just passed around, all the committee members have in front of them. In addition to this summary sheet, there's a much longer document with more than 500 pages um, of, this, of this report. Um, and that contains the town by town, district by district results, and that will be posted on our website as well. Um, again, I want to take this, this chance to thank the Elections Division staff, as, as the Secretary did, um, and also thank the, the county clerks um, and, the, and the representative clerks, town clerks, city clerks, um, who all worked hard in the week leading up to the election um, and in the, in the past week to, to report and finalize these results. Um, Canvassing of results for the county offices, state senate, and state representative taking place uh, over the course of the last week. An official copy of the Canvas report for the federal and statewide offices um, will be posted as official on our website following this meeting, and we'll also post the, the statewide voter turnout report, uh, which I also just, just circulated. So I'll be reading from this document the summary of results. Um, and again, the, the 500 page of detailed results goes along with it, will be up on the, up on the site. Um, I'll read the vote totals and identity for each, um, the winner of each office for each party. And after we go through each office and each party, we'll then go to the individual certificates, um, which we'll distribute for, for signature um, of both the reports and the certificates of nomination. Um, so unless there's any questions from the committee, I'm... Well, yeah, so I, I just have one question because this has come up in the past. Um, so I see the percentage totals um, likely includes the undervotes. Um, I know in the past, I've, I've signed off, we've they've done that before and the legislature has actually gone back and had to correct the, um, the official result to not include the undervotes. Um, so I just want to kind of see yeah, what your thought, or what, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not familiar with what had been done in the past. We can certainly look into that and check the issue with, yeah. with the legislature. I can say that with this summary and the way they're prepared, and part of the mm -hmm. checks and balances that we have in place mm -hmm. is that every ballot that's, that's cast um, matches up and is accounted for, mm -hmm. for here, whether it be a blank vote or whether it be um, you know, whether it be a write-in or a candidate all on, all on here. And so that's the way we 
see, we know the number of ballots that were cast in each town for each of the three parties, and then we make sure that each of the um, offices that are voted for tally up to that same number. Yeah, oh ballots, yeah, no, I, I get that. I mean, it makes sense from issue. that, but yeah, I know, um, I think it was in the 20, maybe 2016 primary, the legislature actually went back because we signed off on a canvas report that listed the percentages and um, based off the undervotes, um, included the undervotes in the, in the percentage for the candidates, yeah. and the legislature actually went back and had to like, basically passed something that changed. You might have actually been been there for that. I'm not I, sure. Yeah, but I wasn't chair of GovOps. So yeah. I don't know that I would have <laughs> yeah, been, been paying yeah. part of class attention. Yeah, so I just want to flag that because um, I would expect that some people might not, might want to see the result, um, you know, the official result reflection, yep. like not not including yes. the, the undervotes. Yep. So, and I, as someone who's actually signed off mm -hmm. on and gotten like, Push back. Yeah. I just want to flag that. Yeah. So right. we don't have that situation yeah. again. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we we're happy to look back into the files yeah. of what happened yeah. in, in twenty sixteen yeah, and suss that out and, and absolutely that. follow back yeah. up with okay. with you and everyone on that. Definitely appreciate flagging yeah. it. Cool. Great. Um, any other questions? If not, we'll we'll jump right in. First we'll we'll lead off um, by doing the race for, for US Senator. Mm -hmm. Uh, on the on the Democratic side, uh, Bernie Sanders had forty eight thousand one hundred and eighty nine votes. There were five hundred and eighty three write in votes, thirty one over votes, three thousand one hundred and sixty six blank votes for a total of fifty one thousand nine hundred and sixty nine uh, total votes. On the and, and and Bernie Sanders was the the winner of that. Of that. Just, just as a clarification, on the overvotes, does that mean that there were thirty one ballots that had multiple votes, or that there were so like if there were two votes on one ballot, right? That's an overvote, right? Is that thirty one votes or thirty one ballots on which there were multiple? Um, this is. This is ballots. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. This this is ballots. They they add up um, to that total votes counted. So okay. can write those four lines together, aggregate up. And I, I'm not sure if that was the issue that was done differently in 2016, or if that had been a change. Yeah. No. I mean, it was. It was. Side, I think so. it was like right. this, and I think ever since in the previous election, they they did not include the undervotes in the official recording of the okay. of the. Yeah, right. I mean, I think it's fine like this, but the, I, I don't know what the official like record would show that we're signing well, up. Yeah, and then, then I guess undervotes would be in that same category. They're not yeah. being included in the total. Okay. Yeah, for percentages purposes. Yeah. yeah. Um, on the Progressive Party, uh, there were 224 write-in votes, no overvotes, 190 blank votes, and 414 total votes counted. Uh, so there was no no winner on the the Progressive Party. On the Republican Party, um, Gerald Malloy had twenty thousand three hundred eighty three votes. There were seven hundred seventy two write-in votes, six over votes, three thousand eight hundred and twenty four blank votes for a total of twenty four thousand nine hundred and eighty five. Uh, total total votes and Gerald Malloy was the the winner of the of the Republican nomination. Moving to representative to Congress on the Democratic side, Becca Ballant had forty seven thousand six hundred and thirty eight votes. There were four hundred and sixty five write in votes, thirteen over votes, three thousand eight hundred and fifty three blank votes for a total of 51,969 total votes. Yeah. That number's going to come up a lot. <laughs> uh, and Becca Ballant was the winner on the Democratic nomination. For the Progressive Party, there were 189 write-in votes, zero over votes, 225 blank votes, for a total of 414 total votes. Uh, again, no winner on the Progressive party side. On the 
Republican Party side, Mark Coster, um, at 19,459 votes. There were 551 write-in votes, six overvotes, 4,969 blank votes for a total of 24,985 votes. And Mark Coster was the a winner on the Republican nomination. Moving to governor on the Democratic side, Esther Charleston had 24,007 votes. Peter Duvall had 9,377 votes. There were 5,159 write-ins, 22 overvotes, 13,404 blank votes for a total of 51,969 total votes, and Esther Charleston was the winner of the, the Democratic nomination for governor. On the Progressive Party, Marielle Blaise had 268 votes. There were 75 write-in votes, no overvotes, 71 blank votes for a total of 414 total votes. And Marielle Blaise was the winner of the Progressive Party nomination for governor. On the Republican Party side, Phil Scott had 23,173 votes. There were 448 write-in votes, seven over votes, 1,357 blank votes for a total of 24,985 total votes. And Phil Scott was the winner of the nomination for the Republican Party for governor. For lieutenant governor on the Democratic Party, uh, Thomas Renner had 18,838 votes. David Zuckerman had 28,729 votes. There were 603 write-ins, 39 overvotes, 3,760 blank votes for a total of 51,969 total votes. And David Zuckerman was the winner of the Democratic Party nomination for lieutenant governor. On the Progressive Party, Zariah Hightower had 257 votes. There were 84 write-in votes, one overvote, 72 blank votes for a total of 414 total votes. And Zariah Hightower was the winner of the Progressive Party nomination for lieutenant governor. For the Republican Party, uh, John Rogers had 13,840 votes. Gregory Thayer had 8,619. There were 234 write-in votes, 35 overvotes, 2,257 blank votes for a total of 24,985 total votes. And John Rogers was the winner of the Republican nomination for lieutenant governor. Moving to state treasurer, Mike Pichak had 45,358 votes for the Democratic Party. There were 221 write-in votes, 41 overvotes, 6,349 blank votes for a total of 51,969 total votes. And Mike Pichak was the winner of the Democratic Party nomination for state treasurer. On the progressive party side, uh, Tim Maciel had 285 votes. There were 42 write-in votes, one overvote, 86 blank votes for a total of 414 total votes. And Tim ACL was the winner of the Progressive Party nomination for state treasurer. For the Republican Party, Joshua Beckhofer had 19,286 votes. There were 542 write-in votes two overvotes, 5,155 blank votes for a total of 24,985 total votes. And Joshua Beckhofer was the winner of the Republican Party nomination for state treasurer. Moving to Secretary of State for the Democratic Party, Sarah Copeland Hansis had 43,182 votes. There were 294 write-ins. 24 overvotes, 8,469 blank votes for a total of 51,969 total votes. 
Sarah Copeland Hans is, is the winner of the Democratic nomination for Secretary of State. Thank you. <laughs> Moving to the Progressive Party, there were 142 write-ins, no overvotes, 272 blank votes for a total of 414 total votes. Uh, so there was no winner of the Progressive Party nomination for Secretary of State. On the Republican Party side, uh, H. Brooke Page had 18,989 votes. There were 368 write-ins, 10 overvotes, 5,618 blank votes for a total of 24,985 total votes. Uh, H. Brooke Page is the winner of the Republican nomination for Secretary of State. For Auditor of Accounts, on the Democratic side, Doug Hoffer had 43,893 votes. There were 341 write-in votes, nine overvotes, 7,726 blank votes, for a total of 51,969 total votes. On the, uh, and the winner was, was Doug Hoffer for the, for the Democratic nomination uh, for Auditor of Accounts. On the Progressive Party side, Linda Gravel had 277 votes. There were 40 write-in votes, no over votes, 97 blank votes for a total of 414 total votes. And Linda Gravel was the winner of the Progressive Party nomination for Auditor of Accounts. On the Republican Party side, H. Brooke Page had 18,129 votes. There were six, 647 write-ins, six overvotes, 6,203 blank votes for a total of 24,985 total votes. And H. Brooke Page was the winner of the Republican nomination for Auditor of Accounts. For Attorney General on the Democratic side, Charity Clark had 43,275 votes. There were 416 write-ins, five overvotes, 8,273 blank votes for a total of 51,969 total votes. And Charity Clark was the winner of the Democratic nomination for Attorney General. On the Progressive Party side, um, Elijah Bergman had 270 votes. There were 37 write-ins, two over votes, 105 blank votes for a total of 414 total votes on the Progressive Party side. And Elijah Bergman is the winner of the Progressive Party nomination for Attorney General. On the Republican Party side, H. Brooke Page had 18,081 votes. There were 548 write-ins, 42 over votes, 6,314 blank votes for a total of 24,985 total votes. And the winner of the Republican Party nomination for Attorney General is H. Brooke Page. That concludes our statewide summary of, of results. We will, congratulations to the winners, and we will move um, to the signing of the official reports uh, on each sheet on each packet here, there is a, uh, a sheet that has um, the official report of the Canvas Committee, which will be the report to the Secretary of State. It will be signed by the Secretary of State and by each member of, um, of this, this canvassing committee. I will, I will read the party, uh, the office, the winner, and, and circulate the sheet for that signature at the same time. On the next sheet is a certificate of nomination, uh, which will go to the winner, and that has a place for the same four signatures. Um, and together here. So this um, first for the Democratic uh, Party for U.S. Senator, with the nominee being Bernie Sanders. We're passing these two sheets for signature. So yeah, I, I just, again, I want to flag the, the percentage issue. Um, um, <laughs> I just don't want us to get into a situation where 
I'm not, not trying to like hold things up. I just don't want us to get into a situation where the legislature is already kind of. Can you just clarify? Because it's very clear what the overvote percentage is and what the blank vote percentage yeah. is. And you're saying that previously so they, those they, percentages they removed it. Yeah. were just not demonstrated on this. Yeah, exactly. OK. Well, that's correctable if need be. OK. It's certainly correctable before the legislature has to. OK. That's, that's OK. In January. OK. Thank you. David, I guess, like, or you're, you're the designee, though. So you, okay. you sign your own name. You're, you're, we have his. Yeah, I guess uh, we have, we have the like email designating like designating you, so okay, everybody good, good, confirmed. Good. Everybody here is legitimate with their own own signatures. Yep. <laughs> okay. um, the the second sheet is only has one. This is the Progressive Party um, vote because there was no uh, winner of the, the U.S. Senator race. There, there is no winner certificate and only one sheet to sign. For the Republican Party, for U.S. Senator, um, and Gerald Malloy as the, the winner is the second sheet certificate for him. For the Democratic Party for a representative oh, to Congress, uh, we have we have two sheets here, as Becca Ballin was the nominee from the Democratic Party. Progressive Party for representative to Congress. Again, there is there is one sheet, as there is no winner of that. Race. For the Republican Party, representative to to Congress, uh, we have the, the two sheets here, as Mark Hoster is the nominee for the Republican Party. Democratic Party nomination for, for governor. We have two, sh two sheets here, including the winner certificate for Esther Charleston. To the Progressive Party for governor, we have two sheets, including the winner certificate for Mary L. Blaze. Two sheets for the Republican Party for a governor, including the certificate of nomination for Phil Scott. Moving to the lieutenant governor for the Democratic. Party, we have two sheets, including the certificate of nomination for David Zuckerman. Mm -hmm. 
And for the Progressive Party, uh, we have the certificate of nomination for Zariah Hightower. And for the Republican Party, for the Lieutenant Governor, we have the certificate of nomination for John Rogers. State Treasurer for the Democratic Party. We have the certificate of nomination for Mike Pichak. And for the Progressive Party, we have the certificate of nomination for Ken Messiel. Republican Party report for State Treasurer, including the uh, certificate of nomination for Joshua Beckhoffer. Moving to Secretary of State for the Democratic Party, we have the certificate of nomination for Sarah Copeland Hansen. That's fun. <laughs> <laughs> just the one sheet on uh, the canvassing report for the Progressive Party, as there was no winner for the Secretary of State. Uh, for the Republican Party, we have H. Brooke Page, um, Certificate of Nomination, as well as the canvassing report. Moving to Auditor of Accounts, uh, for the Democratic Party, we have two sheets, including the Certificate of Nomination for Doug Hoffer. For the Progressive Party, we have two sheets, including Linda Gravel's Certificate of Nomination. For the Republican Party, we have two sheets, uh, including H. Brooke Page's uh, certificate of nomination for Auditor of Accounts. Finally, moving to Attorney General for the Democratic Party. We have two sheets, including Charity Clark's Certificate of Nomination. We also have two sheets for the Progressive Party, including Elijah Bergman's uh, nomination for Attorney General. <laughs> and finally, for the Republican Party for Attorney General, we have uh, H. Brooke Page's uh, canvassing report and certificate of nomination.
that concludes the certification of the 2024 uh, statewide primary and federal results. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.